guess I get off to excuse the after festival working look, but I just wanted to do a quick one because of the whole Wildland thing. The rest of the video will come later. But Raw Cocoa, all of the ones on the shelves have these sticking up bits, so they're all open. Kind of a bit dodgy. I mean, there's kind of stuck to go say that they're not opened. If you can see, there's not that I can get the angle on it very well. Quite a bit missing. So, yeah, I know they'll say settling, but I guess that's not that bad compared to whoops, the other one's like, which I have actually opened. And this has these plasticky things, which were invisible until you actually came to open it. So, not these sticking up epilepsy that were all sticking up on the shelf. So, as a customer for £5, I wouldn't buy that. No way. And with them, it's just raw cocoa, really. You could probably get raw cocoa far cheaper, and I'll look that up for the next part of the video. But, here on Flax. Let's see if I can find an angle where you can actually see just how much is missing. <laughs> can you see this? That's like half a bottle. Half a bottle of settling. And that was sealed. So, yeah, no, that is really bad for £5. <laughs> it's like, look how big it is. No, you're getting that much. No, you're not getting a full thing. So that takes a piss. Anyway, on to the main part. See you later. Okay, so I decided to try to key flax, which again was half empty. I know you're meant to eat it raw. I don't know. It says to sprinkle two to three teaspoons, that's 10 grams of the 100 grams per thing. That seems quite a lot. It says to all salads, including cereal. Cereal it might go with salads, smoothies and shakes. It doesn't seem, you know, unless you make them up yourself, maybe. But then but I decided to cook them as a coating on some burgers. It does give it a crispier coating to the burger. Obviously, only a little bit of flavour, not that much. But I didn't use a huge, huge coating, I just made it a thin, ordinary coating. But again, it's more that it's meant to be raw, I guess, for the healthy blood cholesterol, plant-based omega-3, for natural, healthy bones and vegan protein. That, of course, defeats the whole vegan protein thing. I guess you can make it a cheese coating as well, and grill it with cheese to make a crunchy coated cheese. I don't know, but adding it to other things maybe. You don't get a lot for your five pounds, <laughs> that's all I can say. So if you're doing that for protein, maybe you might want to look at peanuts and a few other things that are less expensive. But you know, it tastes nice, it makes a good coating to add to things, I wouldn't necessarily add the amounts that they say. But it does complement the burger and give it a nice crunch and a nice sort of flavour as well. Aftertaste. What else you could use in? I don't know. I'll try and find some raw to use in make some cereal. But I was going to make porridge with the other thing. So I did some rice pudding with that. Two teaspoons. And it's really strong, the cocoa. So far too much. And it says two to three for that as well. Thanks for watching. Next segment. Okay, so a quick one to show off just how ridiculous two teaspoons of the raw cocoa is. As you can see, powder escaping as I open it. Okay, so we can add one. That already looks like plenty for porridge to me. Yes, maybe I've got it a bit heat, but, you know, it doesn't say, like, flat, and it's not exactly hugely heat, like... When it specifies heat, I make them even bigger. 100 grams for 4 99 Tesco sell cocoa powder 250 grams for £2 or one ninety nine. So, is there much difference between the cocoa, do you reckon? I mean, 
sure that says organic, raw cocoa. I don't know if Tesco is raw, but pretty much it tastes the same to me anyway. I'm just going to mix this in properly so there's not lots of powder, so that you can see just how ridiculously chocolatey it is, and it makes it taste really strong as well, so it's not just the look. I mean, it's already completely brown. Now it's so bitter and strong, and you're going to need to add sugar to that to make it taste nice, really. It's just so overpowering. And say you need two teaspoons or whatever you're adding it to to get the health benefits or whatever benefit they're trying to portray. It just makes it so strong and overpowering. Maybe if you're making chocolate cookies and baking it, but then what's the point in having it raw? You know, it wants it to be eaten raw. And this is eaten raw, really. It just makes it really, really bitter and overpowering with the teaspoon recommendation. I'd say go for one teaspoon. But it probably wants you to use more and eat more and buy more. But then, does it have more benefit in health than regular cocoa powder that you can get for 2 99 for 250 grams? That's two and a half times the amount for less than 50% of the price. So, yes, it doesn't really make much sense, I know. I'm supposed to be saying, ooh, look at the health benefits and all that, but I give impartial, honest advice. And I just don't think that maybe Biogland necessarily provides anything particular special that you can get cheaper elsewhere. Maybe in the other stupid things like the wheatgrass thing, you know, maybe the convenient wheatgrass powder, but let's face it, I wasn't going to pay £10 for a thing of wheatgrass for 100 grams of wheatgrass. No, that would be ridiculous and I wouldn't like the flavour either so yeah. Cocoa was one of the things you had to try and you know that was one that you specifically had to find the GM flax that works okay and you know it just seems expensive as well. So if you're into these things maybe do some research yourself but I just think they're overpriced and you get the same health benefits from other products cheaper than these pre-processed, branded BioGlan things. Maybe they've gone into Tesco because they don't sell so well in their own stores. I'm not sure, but there are products in Tesco that are pretty much on the same level and far cheaper. So bear that in mind. Thanks for watching. We'll be back.